Hey, welcome back to Final Trade. We're going to talk today about why opening sealed product almost always destroys value. And the way I'm going to explain this is in terms of booster pack equivalents. And a booster pack equivalent is the value of one sealed booster pack at the time of release of an expansion or a set or whatever we're talking about here. And so when you first release a, an expansion, the booster pack equivalent of a booster pack is one by definition. And so the value of a booster pack is going to ride along pretty much straight, okay? And the reason for that is it's still in print, it's easy to get, there's no scarcity, and it's gonna stay fairly level. Now, it can bump up and down, you know, if there's shipping problems, if there's manufacturing problems, if a warehouse burns down, if a, a pipeline stops and, and trucks can't get across the country, then, you know, you're gonna have waves in here along the way, but in general, it's going to be flat. And so the second line we're gonna draw is the booster pack equivalent cost of a booster box. And so what that means is even though, like with Magic, there's typically 36 packs in a booster box, you know, flesh and blood, there's 24, um, we're saying what is the cost per pack if we buy a booster box? And so it's gonna be a little lower and it's gonna kind of do the same thing. And the reason it's a little lower is you get economies of scale on the shipping, you know, dealers wanna give you an incentive to buy more so they can move more volume. So, you know, you get a bulk discount. And similarly, if you buy the case, each booster pack costs slightly less than if you buy them by the box, the green line, or just buy a single pack in your local card store or the lunch line. And so, you know, that's pretty non-controversial. It's pretty easy. Now, the blue line I'm going to draw, this is going to be the expected value of one pack of singles. And the thing you really have to keep in mind here, you know, if you, if you open one booster pack of Commander Legends and you draw the foil jeweled lotus, well, congratulations, don't buy a lottery ticket because you've used up all your luck for the rest of your life. But you can't use that kind of example for this. You need to use the average expected value over hundreds, thousands of booster packs. And so if you were just to open any random booster pack, what would its value be? And the, this is the line that really gets interesting because, you know, you hear about card stores who do mass box openings and people on YouTube do them and then they sell singles and things like that. And when a set first comes out, there's a huge demand for singles. There's people who want specific cards that have been leaked and, you know, there's no cards in the market. And so there's a, there's a lack of supply. And so that drives up the price. And so for a very short period, when a set first comes out, the expected value of the singles in a booster pack is actually higher than the cost of the booster pack. You can actually make money by opening booster packs just for a small amount of time, but it's not easy money. You have to put up the capital to buy all of this stuff. You have to be in an advantageous position where you can get access to it early so you're not waiting weeks to get it while everyone else is flooding the market with singles. And then you just have to physically put in the labor to open and sort all of them. Then you have to start listing them on eBay, TCG Player, in your store if you want a store. And then you have to actually consummate sales, move the product, ship it, collect the money, everything else, deal with fraud, deal with transactions, all the overhead. But you know the, the stories that you hear of people who do this is they can clear 15, 20, 25% return just by buying a couple hundred booster boxes at set release and opening and selling singles. But here's what happens. A bunch of people do that, the market gets really crowded, and pretty quickly, there's tons of singles to be had. And so the expected value of, of one pack of singles starts to sink, and it comes down and down, and over time, people open more boxes, and people who wanted singles, they acquire them, and pretty soon, you're going to start destroying value by opening sealed product. And so you can think of this as if, if I take the difference in any two lines here, um, the distance between those lines, the vector between them, is the amount of value created or destroyed by opening that thing. Because remember, we can always take sealed product and break it down into the next lower level, but we can't ever take anything that's open and seal it back up, not, not honestly. And so, you know, if you, if you take a case and you break it into booster boxes, six in the case of Magic or four in the case of Flesh and Blood, um, 
you will capture a little bit of value by doing that because you bought it with a better economy of scale at the case level and then you're selling it at a lesser economy of scale at the booster box level. Now, there are complications there. Practically, you won't make money because you have transaction fees, shipping fees, market fees, things like that, and you have competitors who are shrinking the possible amount of profit there as they all compete to capture it. So it's, it's more of a theoretical exercise that you could just take these and break them down to make money, but this is the one between booster packs and the, the singles at release, this is the value you can capture here. If you're quick and you're efficient and you know what you're doing and you take the risk to try to do it. But as you can see, if you're not successful and you're not quick, the value of those singles can melt out from under you and then you've lost a lot of money. And so all of this holds true while a set is in print. And so the interesting thing happens when a set goes out of print. Well, let's, Let's just draw, let's just mark the set going out of print right there. All right. So what happens to the value of a sealed case? It takes off and it takes off like this. Now don't pay too much literal attention to the exact slope of the line. And again, this time scale, it's, it's not like one inch is a week or one inch is a year or anything. It's a generalized scale, okay? Um, booster boxes will take off at a less steep trajectory and you know booster packs they'll be even less steep than that and now again singles will be the least steep now there's an interesting reason for this and it goes back to what I said a minute ago which was you could always take one of these products like this booster case and you can break it into booster boxes and you can always take your booster boxes and you can break them into to packs you can always break your packs into singles but you can't go back up the other way and so after a product has gone out of print there will never be any more of any of these than there are right at that moment and over time they will always sink downwards in numbers your cases will always get broken to, to boxes boxes to packs packs to singles and so you can imagine, you know, if, if there's anyone in the world who has a uh, magic alpha uh, booster case, you know, it, it'd probably sell for high six figures. But um, it, it would probably only be one in existence also. And so you can get singles of alpha cards easily. You can just go buy them. But you can't get these higher up ones. And so as we go further and further out in time, this, this effect is magnified. And so you end up where these lines for the sealed products flip over and start diverging after it goes out of print. And the singles will go up over time. Maybe the, the slope of this line doesn't quite betray it, but you, you do expect this to go up. It's just the uh, multiple between the values of the singles and the value of the sealed products expands over time. And so this is why opening sealed products almost always destroys value because you're always jumping from here to here to here to here from red to green to orange to blue and whenever you're past some point slightly after they go out of print whenever you make that jump from red to green to orange to blue you're going down in value because again booster pack equivalent value and so you're always going to be going down taking steps down as you open those products when they're out of print but you know you might want to anyway because occasionally some of us like to actually play with these cards and enjoy the game so you know if you like that go ahead and do it open them to your heart's content and you can find plenty of videos on youtube of people opening alpha decks beta decks beta booster packs things like that they're destroying value they're destroying a huge amount of value when they do it but they enjoy it and it's their money so this is just kind of generalized sense of, of how this works. Um, you can get some kinks in the road. You know, WotC likes to play games today where they, they print a whole bunch of cards and they'll release a couple tractor trailer loads full of them into the market. And then they'll just kind of be silent about whether it's out of print or more coming or what. We don't know. And then they'll dump another warehouse full onto, onto Amazon. And so you'll see effects 
where it kind of starts to pick up like this and then they dump another 50 pallets on the Amazon and it kind of falls back down and it, it gets back into this kind of look. And so you, it, it's more of a head fake about whether or not the set is really out of print. So keep that in mind. Um, so think about this when you're, you're investing, when you're opening packs, when you're collecting. If you just like playing the game, who cares if you're destroying value? Who cares if you don't buy the set until the singles are already down here and you know, you're just falling down from here to here to open a set? Enjoy the cards, play the game, have fun. If you like this kind of stuff, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.